Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just bless you. Good morning, everybody. We want to welcome you to the Sunday morning service at the Refuge Church in Loves Park, Illinois, in the month of May 2020. We're just excited that you're here and that you're going to spend this time with us this morning. In the midst of everything that's going on and pandemic and epidemic, we're just praying today that you find a refuge in the service today, as you find a refuge in the Lord Jesus, who is our rock of refuge. Uh, this morning, we're very, very excited because we have Rosie with us, and she's going to be leading us in live praise and worship this morning. So uh, Rosie is a, a daughter here in the house at the refuge, and we love her, and uh, she's going to lead us today. So I want to encourage you during praise and worship to come up next to the TV or the phone or whatever it is that you're using for broadcast, and just enjoy the Lord this morning as she leads us in praise and worship. Uh, then as we get into the word today, I really believe God's going to bless you in a message out of the book of Nehemiah that I believe is going to inspire you and get you excited about what God's going to do. You know, it's very easy right now in this time where everybody is so closed in. And if you do get out, you know, you go to Walmart and everybody's wearing masks and nobody wants to, to make eye contact. And it, and it just seems like such a dark and difficult time. In the midst of this, I want you not to forget, please, that God wants to use this time to get you into the secret place and draw you near to his presence. Because God wants to use this time to speak to you, to instruct you, to teach you, to take you to that deeper place. The enemy wants to bring depression and oppression in this time, worry and fear. Jesus wants to bring you to a place where you are standing more on the firm foundation that is him than ever before, where you trust him more, where you're praying more, where you're in the word more, so that when everything is lifted, you just launch forward into everything that God has for you because you're, you're launching forth from that deeper place. It's like the song of songs, right? Who is this coming out of the wilderness, leaning on the arm of her lover? That's the way God wants you to come out of this season, leaning on his arm and in a deeper place. So I just pray that for everybody that's here today and everybody that's listening in online today, that that's going to be your heart and your attitude in this time that remains as we're waiting for everything to be lifted. Once everything is lifted, we're excited that we'll all be back in the house together again, worshiping together and enjoying the Lord. But I also want to encourage you during this time as you're drawing near and going after the Lord, stay on mission, stay on mission. We are kingdom builders, and we want to still be looking for opportunities in this season to tell people about Jesus. And that's where I've got a quick praise report for you this morning. Uh, Wednesday afternoon, I was coming into our neighborhood after work, and I saw a young man going door to door and selling things, and God really put him on my heart. I went home Wednesday night wondering, I wonder if he's going to knock on the door, and he didn't. But I got home from work Thursday night, and Holly said, hey, a young man knocked on the door. He's going to be coming later tonight. He wants to talk to you about what he's selling. And I said, oh, okay, um, that, that's, that's all right, you know, didn't know what to think. But this young man named Jordan comes to our house, and uh, he, we bring him into the house, and we're talking about what he's selling. And then the Lord told me just to tell him about who Jesus is. The Lord told me to ask him, if you died tonight, and you stood before the Lord Jesus, and the Lord asked you, why should I allow you to enter into heaven? What would your answer be? And he said, well, I've been a good person, I've done good things, and I love to invest in people. And we talked about the fact that that's good, but that's not good enough. And the Lord allowed me to share the gospel with him. So Jordan comes to our house at 7 o'clock. He doesn't leave until 11 o'clock Thursday night. And in that time, he's gotten saved filled with the Holy Spirit. He's gotten the gift of tongues. He's gotten deliverance and some inner healing. And he's walking out the door saying, God is real. Is that not awesome in the Lord? So in the midst of this time, don't forget about the great end times harvest. In the midst of this time, keep sharing the gospel. During this time, the enemy wants us to think in reach, to think about us, 
but Jesus wants us to continue to outreach and build the kingdom. The word says that he who wins souls is wise. So we want to be wise in the Lord and be telling people about who he is. So I just wanted to share that with you this morning. I thought that was just awesome in the Lord. Now this morning we're going to ring, read Psalm 91. And so I'm going to read Psalm 91 and then Rosie's going to come up to uh, the, uh, the Clavinova this morning and she's going to pray and she's going to lead us in praise and worship this morning. So if you have the word with you this morning, let's go to Psalm 61. Hallelujah. Shiriya baba, shodiya baba, kariya bashi. Hallelujah. The word says in Psalm 61, Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. As I, I call, as my heart grows faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge in a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and to take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God, and you have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then I will ever sing praise to your name and fulfill my vows day after day. And I love it. Just right across the page in Psalm 62 and verses 1 and 2, David says, My soul finds rest in God alone, and my salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, and I will never be shaken. Hallelujah. So I just bless you in the name of Jesus this morning. I'm excited that you're a part of our service today. I'm excited that soon we're going to be together again. I'm excited that people are getting saved and God is doing things. And I'm excited we have live praise and worship this morning. So God is awesome, isn't he? So I want to encourage you, just enjoy the service today. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. No matter what's going on in your life today, I want to encourage you to let go of the negative things that are happening and to keep your eyes and your focus on Jesus because he is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. And if we focus on him today, then we won't be focusing on all the negative things that are going on around us. So focus on him. Enjoy him Listen to the Holy Spirit today and let the love of the Father just invade your home as you listen in. God bless you. So, Father God, I pray for this time that yes. we're going through right now, God. God, I pray that this is not only a time of growth, but a time where our faith is really being tested, God. God, I pray that for wh whoever is going through what they're going through right now with this pandemic, God, God, I pray that you heal them in Jesus' name. God, in Jesus' name, I pray that the doors of the church will start to open and this COVID-19 will go away quickly, God, in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you protect us through this hard time and this time of hardship, God. In Jesus' name, protect us. Amen. Tram. 
trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice, and how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great. Worship so high. 
see your heart in everything you made. Every burning star will signal a fire above the rays. If creation sings your praise, it's so Don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. And for once you have spoken, all nature and signs follow the sound of your voice. And as you Catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature so fine, I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky. Chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride. And on a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die.
Pillar of the star before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life.
lies beyond the stars those dazzling heights too fast to climb and i got so high to fall so far but i found heaven as love swept below my heart bleeding my soul breathing i found my life when i laid it down upward falling spirit soaring i touch the sky when my knees hit the ground treasure waits within your scars this gift of freedom gold came by i bought the world and sold my heart you traded heaven to have me again my heart beating my soul And I heard 
A thousand stories of what you may think your life, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good boss. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, when I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know. Just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good boss. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am.
sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe just gone through the motions i'm sorry when i just sang another song take me back to where we started i open up my heart to you and i'm sorry when i've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to see.
I feel like that we're so distracted on what's going on right now that we're not thanking God for all the things that we have done. And where it says, um, I'm sorry, um, I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I feel like this is a time and place where we need to open our hearts and give our time to God, the time that we were unable to give before this pandemic started. So we're going to start that song again. And I would like you guys um, and those who are, who are watching live to repeat these words because these words are very important for this time of struggle right now. Caught up in your presence, I just wanna sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never wanna leave. Oh, I'm not here for play.
I'm sorry when I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're ringed up. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to see. I'm caught up in this holy moment, and I never want to leave. And I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just Father God, I would like to pray for this morning. I pray that what um, the message that we're going to receive today will speak to us in Jesus' name. God, That I pray that we won't stand in this um, difficult time in fear, but in faith and with strength that you've given us, God. God, I pray that you um, give us um, gifts that we can use to worship you, God. God, I pray that um, in this time and struggle that you protect us. I know it's scary, God, um, but I just pray that everyone will not be afraid, but be strong and stand in this, um, knowing that um, it is done, that we will see church doors open, that we will see schools open, that we will be able to open our homes to friends and family again, God. 
God, in Jesus' name, protect us, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just take a few moments and be still and know that he is God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I thank you that I hear you saying this morning, Behold, I'm coming soon. Behold, I'm coming soon. Behold, I'm coming soon, says the Lord. Make yourself ready. Make yourself ready. Make yourself ready. Surrender to me in this hour, says the Lord. Surrender to me in this moment, says the Lord. Surrender to me in this season of your life, says the Lord. He says, call unto me in this season and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. He says, come unto me in this season for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord, Lord is saying in this season, my arms are open and I'm calling you to me. I'm calling you to me. I'm calling you to me. I'm gathering my sheep in this season, says the Lord. For I am coming back soon. Lord, I thank you that I hear you saying that, Lord, you want us to make every decision from this point forward based upon a heart that's listening to what the Spirit of God is saying and yielded in surrender to you. Lord, I thank you that I hear you saying that as things begin to open up, Lord, Lord, as we go through these phases of reopening in the state of Illinois that our, gover our governor, Lord, has ordained, God, I thank you that what you have ordained is more important than what he has ordained. But Lord, I thank you that as things begin to open up again, God, you're telling us not to expect things to return to the way that they were. But Lord, you're saying that things are going to be different. Lord, you want us to be different. Lord, you want us to have a for such a time as this mentality. God, you want a deeper place of surrender. You want a, a people, Lord, who go to a deeper place of prayer. Lord, you want each and every one of us to be a house of prayer to the nations for you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that when things reopen, you want us to be different. You want us to be changed. You want us to be more like you. You want us to be more in love with you. Lord, you want to take us to a deeper place because you're coming back soon and Lord I thank you that I hear you saying right now that there's nothing that we're holding on to that's more important than your agenda for our life God there's nothing that we're holding on to that's more important than what it is that you want to do and Lord you're calling us to lay down our idols, our lovers, the things that are getting in the way so that we can be completely yours in this season. Lord, it's a season where the church is going to go from dating you to marrying you. Lord, it, it's a place where we're going to go from the cliche to the depth of rhema in you, God. Lord, it's a season where you're changing everything. <coughs> so, Lord, I ask that you'll help us be ready for this season. Lord, you sit in your word, be ready in season and out of season. God, help us be ready in this season, Lord, because you're coming back soon. Lord, you're speeding things up and you're looking for those that are willing to be sped up. Lord, help us in this season. 
Lord, I thank you for the word that you gave us today. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the message that's about to be delivered. Lord, you use this message just to stir my heart, God. And God, I know you're going to stir others' hearts through this message today. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we might make Jesus known and that we might know Jesus more <coughs> and that we might love him more in the midst of this time, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you would take this word and may it stir the hearts of everyone who hear it. And Lord, may it bring forth, God, a greater devotion, a greater hunger, a greater focus in our life, Lord God, in the midst of this time. So Lord Jesus, we love you. We give this time to you. We bless your holy name. And Lord, open up our hearts now to receive this word. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Well, I hope that you're excited about the Lord this morning. That was blessed and anointed praise and worship, wasn't it? Hallelujah. Glory. We were blessed and man was there an anointing that came forth through that. Hallelujah. Christy's in the room. Rosie's mama and she's just pleased in the back. She's just glowing in the Lord. She's like Moses coming off the mountain. I'm trying to just like, can you veil that thing, man? I'm telling you what, but how exciting in the Lord. So this morning, I want to encourage you not to let anything discourage you as you're about to listen to this word, because this is a word that's really going to direct you in the midst of the season that we're in. And as I said at the beginning of the message, I really believe that in a season where God has wanted to take his people deeper, to show us more, to reveal more to us, to get us ready to be launched even stronger as the curtains begin to lift and, and everything begins to be opened up again. How many know that when God moves, so does the enemy? So the enemy's purpose for the season has been to bring depression and oppression. How many folks have been just stranded in their homes for weeks now? How many elderly folks have not been able to have their relatives come to them? How many people have been in the hospital and their family members haven't been able to come? It's been a, a real dark work of the enemy. But how many know that Daniel said, but the people who know their God, even in the midst of the darkness and the difficulty, they're going to do mighty exploits. So I believe in the season, God is setting you up for mighty exploits. You receive that today? Amen. If you receive that today, I want you to go to the book of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. And there's just a word that, that I want to share with you this morning that uh, somebody had said, hey, I want you to listen to something. And it was a message that the guy was preaching. And God began, began to really speak to me in the message that he was speaking and began to give me some real direction for what we need to be doing in the midst of this season and what we need to understand God's doing in the midst of this season. So that's what you're going to get this morning. And, and the title of this message is how to thrive in the midst of the process. How to thrive in the midst of the process. And right now the process is COVID-19 for every one of us. But how many know once we get out of COVID-19, there's going to be other processes. <laughs> there's going to be other seasons that God's going to take us through. This is not your final season. This is just a season. And I want to remind you of that in the Lord today. So today we're going to talk about how to thrive in the midst of the process, how to learn how to thrive in every season, including COVID-19. Can I hear an amen? Now today we're going to start in Nehemiah chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 1. And we're going to take a look at, a glimpse at, an individual in the Word who's very, very unique. And his name is Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was in a place of being in captivity. Uh, the, uh, the captivity had gone on that had been prophesied about by the prophets throughout the Old Testament. Now God's judgment has come and God's people are in captivity. And we have this gentleman by the name of Nehemiah. And he is a Jew. His family's from Jerusalem. And he finds himself in a place where in captivity he's been favored and he's the cupbearer of the king. 
Now the cupbearer had a very interesting job. They were to sample the wine or the drink before the king drank of it so that if any poison was in the drink, the cupbearer would die first before the king. That was his job. What a job description. Can you imagine? Here's the one-line job description. You will taste the wine before the king, comma, and die in his place if it is poisoned. That was his job. So he was doing his job, and he was doing his job with everything that he had. He was doing as, as unto the Lord, the word would indicate to us. But all of a sudden, in the midst of him doing what he was supposed to be doing, God began to move on his heart. And that is prophetic for us today. Because there's a lot of people that have been doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. God is about to put something on your heart like He's never put it on your heart before. And God is going to cultivate that. God's going to burn that within you until you begin to walk in it. For some, it's going to be something that God's spoken in your life seasons ago. And it didn't seem to happen and it seemed like you were in delay so you just kind of forgot about it. You just put it on the shelf. You just kind of put it to bed and you just let it go. For others, this is going to be something that God is going to begin to burn on your heart that He's been already talking to you about in the season. And then for others, this is going to be something that God's put on your heart that He's never put on your heart before. And all of a sudden, there's going to be a burning and there's going to be a yearning where there's never been one before. So there's three groups here, but God is doing the same thing in the three groups. He's bringing a burning and He's bringing a yearning and He's going to want you to move forward in that because I believe the time is short. I heard the Lord saying that again this morning. Tell them the time is short. I'm coming back soon. What we do in these final seasons really matter that we want to walk in what God wants us to walk through so we can have maximum impact for the kingdom because we love the king of the kingdom. So here's Nehemiah. He's doing his job as unto the Lord. He's tasting of the king's wine. And all of a sudden, God puts a burden on his heart for his homeland. God puts a burden on his heart for Jerusalem. God puts a burden on his heart for the walls that are broken down around Jerusalem and the state of the city that he loves, that his ancestors lived in. Now it's interesting, when the invading forces came through, they tore down the walls around Jerusalem. Walls are very prophetic if we look at what walls are. They're very, very prophetic. They symbolize protection. They symbolize safety. They keep the enemy out. Come on now. They bring a sense of peace. We've got to understand this. So isn't it interesting that the enemy had the walls torn down? And because the walls were torn down, the people were living in fear. The people were living in worry. They were living in doubt. They were subject to their enemy. Anybody who wanted to could wander in and out of the city at any time of the day or night. And because of that, they were in a place of constant fear. And that begins stirring on the heart of Nehemiah. And it gets to the point where he can't even hide it when he comes before the king. And if there's some place that he's going to want to hide it, it's before the king. <laughs> because this is the king that he's in exile under. But God is moving so so powerfully in his life, he can't hide this from anybody. And that's the way God's going to move in your life in this burning, this yearning that he's about to put in you or awaken in you. Now what I love about Nehemiah is he's not the apostle like Paul was. He's not the lover like David was. He's not the dream interpreter like Joseph was. Well, what was he? He was an administrator. God gave him an apostolic anointing of administration. If you know the Enneagram, he was an eight in the Enneagram. You either did what he said or you paid the price. In fact, if you read through the book of Nehemiah, it gets to the point where he, he realizes that those inside the city have married foreign women 
And so uh, the way he handles it is he starts beating people up and pulling their hair out. That's what the word says. That's Nehemiah. And that's how he starts getting their attention. So that, that's who he was. He's just this odd character that God raises up to rebuild the wall, which I believe is also prophetic because in this hour, God is raising up odd people, peculiar people, people that nobody would pick for their leadership team, but God has, and he's raising them up in this hour to rebuild the broken walls. In fact, that's a word of prophecy in the Old Testament. The Lord says, and I will make you a repairer of broken walls. There are people out there right now that their walls are broken down because of this virus. God wants to make us a repairer of broken walls. In the church, the walls are broke down. God is wanting to raise up a generation who's going to rebuild the broken walls that God wants to reestablish. Now notice, if you will, Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 1, the word says, in the month of Nisan, so this was the fourth month of the year. By the way, Nisan was the month of the Passover, interestingly enough. So in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Xerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and I gave it to the king. Well, he did more than just take the wine. He tasted the wine to make sure that there was no poison in it. If he dropped dead on the way to the king, then he fulfilled his purpose in that job. Okay? If he made it to the king, he also fulfilled his purpose. Isn't that interesting? He was like a light switch, on or off, but either way he's fulfilling what he's supposed to do. Now I want you to notice here, the word says, I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you're not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of the heart. So the word says he'd never been sad in the king's sight. But this just wasn't a general sadness. This was a burden of God that was on his heart. The king didn't realize that. He said, well, that, this must be sadness of heart. No, it was the burden of God that was weighing heavy on him because God was calling him to do something. We've got to understand this in the Lord. Is there a heaviness on your heart right now over something? If it is, God may be speaking to you about what, what he wants you to do about it. So the king says, this could be nothing but sadness of heart. And he says, I was very much afraid. Because the king could say, you know, your head's coming off. And we got another guy who's going to bear the cuff, and he can start right now, okay? So he was afraid in front of the king, but he said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my fathers are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? So isn't this interesting? He has two burdens for the city. He's burdened over the broken down walls, and he's burdened over the gates that are non-existent. Isn't that interesting? Walls keep things out. Gates allow things to come in and out. Interestingly enough, your heart is a gate. That's why the, the book of Proverbs says, above all else, guard your heart. It's the wellspring of life. Your eyes are a gate. Your ears are a gate. What you let in through those gates comes in and affects your soul. So Jerusalem was in an unprotected state where not only were the walls torn down, there were no gates left any longer. So they couldn't control or protect anything. Isn't that interesting? Verse 4, the word says, The king said to me, Well, what is it that you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, or I prayed to Jehovah, and I answered the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let, me, let you send me to the city in Judah where my fathers are buried so that I can rebuild it. Now this is interesting. He's asking the king if he can rebuild a city and rebuild its walls and gates, a city that's been conquered by that king's kingdom something that necessarily wouldn't be on the heart of the king, 
But because it mattered to Nehemiah, and because Nehemiah had served the king so well and walked in the favor of God in the sight of the king, what normally wouldn't have mattered to the king, notice the response. See, things happen when you walk in the favor of the king. And in this season, if you will listen to the burden that God is putting on your heart, and begin to ask God to open up doors, He's going to cover you with a supernatural favor. And those that you need to go to to get things from are going to say yes. So the word says in verse 6, Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked me, How long will your journey take? (laughs) He didn't even say yes or no. He just says, okay, how long is it going to be? How long is it going to be? He didn't even question. Notice the question he asked. He says, how long will your journey take, number one? And number two, when will you get back? And it pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. Isn't that interesting? I also said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of the trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive at Judah. And then he goes on to say, and by the way, can I have a letter to the keeper of the royal forest so that I can have beans and wood to work with? By the way, king, can you set it up so I have the food that I'm going to need for this process? By the way, can you set it up so I can have the finances I'm going to need for this? What we find here was Nehemiah had nothing that he could offer for the burden that God gave him, except his yes. That's all that he could offer. He didn't have the resources. He didn't have the ability to let himself go. Come on now. He didn't have anything. But when he surrendered and said yes to God, God supernaturally covered him with favor. So the king that he worked for was willing to give him anything that he needed. (laughs) How many know that we have a king that if we'll surrender to Him and say yes, will give us everything that we need to fulfill the burden He's put on our hearts. Can I hear an amen? Do you receive that in the Lord right now? Is anybody excited about the Lord? Amen. So what do we see about Nehemiah? We see that he's called by God to rebuild the walls and the gates around Jerusalem. So it's interesting that he leaves to go to Jerusalem And when he gets there, if you read the word, he doesn't tell anybody why he's there. He doesn't talk to the leaders. He doesn't go and call a a visioneering meeting with the, the leaders of the city. What he does is he goes in, he gets a place to stay, and then at night he goes around the city to find out what state of disrepair the city is in. They don't know why he's there. They don't know what he's doing. But what he's doing is he doesn't want man's man's assessment of what's going on. He wants God's assessment. And what he found was the people that were left in Jerusalem, they were capable. There were priests and there were leaders and there were folks that had their homes there. There were folks that were working in the agricultural community outside the city. There was still trade going on in the city. All of that was going on, but it was going on while the walls were broken down and the gates were built with fire or burned with fire. So what does that mean? They were trying to continue to do everything they'd done before, but they were doing it without safety and protection and covering. They were doing it in fear. And these people where anyone was capable to have picked up a stone and start rebuilding the walls, no one was doing it. They were allowing things to stay the way that it was when any of them could have started rebuilding the wall. So God had to raise up a man who was (laughs) countries away in captivity and put it on his heart to rebuild the walls and the gate and to send him to a place to get folks to fire it up. He had a leadership anointing to get people to do what they could have done on their own, but they weren't doing. Whoo! Somebody look at the prophetic insight into that message. And God sends this guy who's rough and gruff 
He's an aide in the Enneagram. He barks at people. He gives orders. He gets mad at people and pulls their hair out and starts punching them. That's who this guy is. And he's the perfect guy to get people motivated and get the job done. He doesn't prophesy with eloquence. He doesn't have dreams and interpret them. He's not the guy that anyone would have chosen, but yet God chose him to do something that anyone could have done, but nobody was doing. Is that not a powerful word in the Lord for us today? Amen? Hallelujah. Now it's interesting that Nehemiah's name means the Lord comforts. The Lord comforts. And he has a powerful call from God on his life to do something in his generation for the city that God loves. It was something that only Nehemiah was going to be able to do. Do you know there's a call on your life in the season that only you can do? Only you can do. God's given you the specific anointing that's like the key that will go into the lock and turn it and open it up in this generation. Yes, there's other keys. Yes, they may look similar to yours, but you've got the only key that fits the lock that opens up the door of destiny that God has for your life. And how many know we have to walk in that in the Lord? Don't hold your key in your pocket. Don't be like the one who the master gave the talents to and he buried the talent. Hallelujah. In this season, we've got to begin using what God has for us for the benefit of his kingdom and the growth of his kingdom. Can I hear an amen? Now, as I study the word, and I love the word, God has me read through the word every two to three years. Hallelujah. <coughs> this year, he's got me on a track where I'm going to be through the word in a year and a half. So I'm really excited about it. I'm reading the Hebrew interlinear version of the word. It is so good. I'm getting the word in the original Hebrew in the Old Testament, the Greek and Aramaic and the New. It is incredible. Some of the revelations that God's been speaking to me in his word. How many love the Lord this morning? Amen. But as I study the word and I look at the people who really appear that God used them to fulfill his purpose in their generation, the Davids and the Josephs and the Joshuas and the John the Baptists and, and the John the Beloveds and the Pauls and all these folks, I see something in their life that they all have in common. And what they had in common is their ability to thrive in every season that God placed them in. Their ability to thrive in every season God placed them in. God wants to teach you how to thrive in whatever season he has you in. The problem is, most of us really like the season we're in, and we want to stay there, and we don't want to transition through it into the next season, or we don't like the season we're in, and we want to rush through it and skip steps so we can get to the next season. How many know God doesn't want you to do either of those two things? God wants you to embrace the season He's placed you in and learn to thrive in that season. This is a word from the Lord for you. That's what God wants. You mean in this COVID-19 season, God wants to teach me how to thrive. You bet He does. You bet He does. How do I thrive in this, this season? With the extra time I have, I spend more time with the Lord. With the extra time I have, I spend more time ministering to my family. With the extra time I have, I listen to the Lord to get His vision for the next season. In the midst of this time, I let God begin to work on things in my life that He wants to work on when normally I'm too busy to allow Him to work on those things. God wants you to thrive in the season of COVID-19. In fact, some prophetically have described this season as a long Sabbath. Isn't that interesting? What some are looking at in, in the church and going, pandemic and my rights are being taken and this is horrible and there's nothing good that can come out of it. It's dark. Jesus, save us. Repeal this whole thing. Jesus is going, wait a minute. Thrive in this season. Thrive in this season. And guess what? The entire church right now is in this season. Some will thrive. Some will kick and buck against the goats and try to get out of it. Some will just go into depression and isolate. I mean, there's a lot of different reactions to this, but God says, 
I want you to thrive in every season of your life. How many receive that in the Lord? So the Lord started speaking this, and, and, and I thought immediately, okay, what is the season? What, what is the season? I'm using this word, but do we all understand what a season is? Do I understand what a season is? So in my study area, when I'm spending time with the Lord, I've got a Webster's College Dictionary there. And I love to pull it out and take a look at it. Are you ready for this? How many know Noah Webster knew the Lord? Noah Webster, who wrote Webster's Dictionary, was a believer. And there are times when I will look up the definition of something in his dictionary and be blown away because there's rhema within his definitions because he knew the Lord. Can I hear an amen? Do you know how he defines a season? Oh, get ready for this. The time when something specifies, flourishes, develops, takes place, or is permitted. Let me say that again. Is the time when something specified flourishes, develops, takes place, or is permitted. What does that tell us? Isn't it interesting that the word flourish is in the definition of season? Which means what? God wants us to flourish in every season. In every season, there's something specific that God wants to flourish, develop, or take place and wants you to permit in your life. In the midst of every single season, and it's hid in Webster's Dictionary. Isn't that interesting in the Lord? Do you receive that? Amen? But here's the thing. Usually, when somebody's in the pulpit or when church folks are sitting together, and they're talking about a season, a season is usually spoken of in negative terms. We use terms like dry season, desert season, difficult season, can't hear the word of God season. Many times when we talk about a season, we only focus and talk about it if it's negative. As God's people, we've got to stop focusing and talking about the negative. And we've got to look at every season as what? A time ordained by God for something specific to flourish, develop, take place, or be permitted to be in our lives. So we need to stop this, what season are you in? Oh, brother, I'm in a dry season. Really? My Bible says, in the desert, prepare ye the way for the Lord. That's what my Bible says. So we've got to stop looking at seasons as negative and realize every single season of your life that you've been in, you are in, and will be in, they're ordained by God for something specific to take place in your life. We've got to realize that as God's people and stop trying to stay in the seasons we like and get the heck out of the seasons that we don't. If we'd have to sit in the heart to flourish in every season we could actually enjoy every single season that God has us in. Come on now. Seasons are ordained by God. That's what Solomon said. Can I hear an amen? Do you receive that in the Lord? Amen? So I'm convinced that to accomplish all that God has for us, we've got to let the Holy Spirit teach us how to thrive in every season of our lives. So if you're sitting there and you've been asking, well, pastor, how do I learn how to thrive in a season? We've got to let the Holy Spirit teach us. We can only let the Holy Spirit teach us if we enter into a season with the revelation, it's ordained by God. How many know God saw COVID-19 coming? Because God saw COVID-19 coming, He had a plan in the season to take you deeper in this season. He had a plan to show you more in this season. He had a plan to shut down the busyness of your life that you're confusing with accomplishment for God and get you to a place where you would finally be still and know that He is God. But the only way we learn to flourish in a season is through the Holy Spirit. And we've got to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you trying to teach me in this season? What are you trying to show me in this season? What are you doing in my life in this season? And when the Holy Spirit speaks, we've got to embrace what Holy Ghost says. Because we know God does everything for a purpose in our lives. 
Do you receive that in the Lord? Even the things that seem negative. God is the ultimate recycler. He takes everything in your life and He uses it for the sake of the kingdom. Are you willing to receive that? And by the way, in the midst of it, He's giving you a testimony and the word says in the book of Revelation and they overcame the enemy through the blood of the Lamb and the power of the testimony. God's giving you an overcoming, demon-busting, devil-discouraging testimony through all these seasons that you're going through. Stop trying to get out of them. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. It's getting awful quiet in the house. Now, I'm going to ask Pastor Cindy to put up Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11 for us. Those at home, you probably like the fact that Pastor Cindy will put up the, the verses for you. Isn't she a blessing from the Lord? Amen. She is a gift from God. Rosie is a gift from God. You're a gift from God. Paul taught us to flourish in every season. Philippians 4.11 is a verse that points that out. Notice what the Word says. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Can I hear an amen? Do you receive that in the Lord? Cindy knew exactly where I was going. Pulls up the Amplified. I'm not saying this because I'm in need. <laughs> Hallelujah. Any personal need. For I've learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ, satisfied to the point that I'm not disturbed or uneasy regardless of my circumstances. That's Paul's way of saying flourish in every season. He says, I've learned no matter what the season is in my life. Whether I'm hungry, I can thrive. If I'm thirsty, I can thrive. If I have much resource, I can thrive. If I have little resource, I can thrive. Through Christ, I can thrive no matter what the season. Can I hear an amen? What would happen if we would begin to believe that in our own lives? What would begin to happen if we had an attitude, God, no matter what season you put me in, I choose to thrive. I choose to grow. I choose to stay in it. I choose to listen to the Holy Spirit and let you accomplish what you want to accomplish. And I choose, dare I say, to enjoy the season no matter what it's called. What could God begin to do in our lives? Can I hear an amen? And I think if we really want to understand this, let's think about this now. Let's look at the life of Joseph. Okay, Joseph, Joseph is one of my favorite individuals in the Old Testament. Whenever I read about his life, and especially the, the part of the season of his life where he's coming out revealing himself before his brothers, I just weep through that whole chapter in Genesis. When he's coming out before his brothers, I cry every single time that I read it. I love his life because I believe his life is a prophetic picture for us of what it's going to be like in the end times. Now, Joseph's name is prophetic. It means Jehovah adds or increases. But how many know if you look at individual seasons in his life, you don't see how he's going to live prophetically up to what his name means. And this is the danger. If you look at individual disjointed seasons in your life, you're not going to see how God connects the dots and you're not going to understand how those seasons are moving you towards your destiny. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, I can start talking about Joseph's prison season or his betrayal season or his false accusation season. I can start talking about all these negative seasons but they aren't going to help you understand how those seasons helped him reach his destiny. But if I look at all the seasons of his life, I see how they add up to Jehovah adds or increases. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, let's look at the seasons of his life. Are you ready for this in the Lord? He had the favorite son season. He had the dreamer season. He had the hated by his brothers season. He had the outcast season. He had the sold as a slave season. He had the flourishes in Potiphar's house season. 
he had the uh, he had the Potiphar's wife pursuing him season. He had the false accusation season of having tried to molest her. He had the prison season where God used him and taught him. He had the dream interpreting season. Then he had the being raised the second in the land under Pharaoh season. Then he had the savior of his family season. Then he had the protector of the line of Christ season. Then he had the season where he shows us how to forgive. Now, how many know if you take a few of those seasons and disjoint them and look at them, you're never going to understand what God was doing in his life in any individual season. But if you put them all together, you see how in every season he learned how to thrive. So by the time it was done, he would fulfilled God's purpose in his generation. Does that make sense? I mean, look at him. He said, I'm going to th- I'm going to thrive in no matter what season God has me in. And he brings Potiphar's house to the place where it is flourishing. Then Potiphar's wife wants to get a hold of him. He runs out the door. She's got his jacket. He accuses him. He goes from all that accomplishment in that season to a prison season. What's he do in prison? He flourishes in the prison. He becomes administrator of the prison. He begins to be put in place where he can interpret dreams in the prison for God to open up the door to the next season in his life. He thrived in every season. Is anybody getting that? Don't just look at the season you're in and go, this doesn't make sense. If we can step back and let the Holy Spirit show us, and I'm sure God will do this when we stand before Him, He'll connect the dots of the seasons and we'll go, now I see exactly what He was doing in every season. But because you can't see that right now, just have a heart to flourish in whatever season He places you in. And say, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to flourish in the midst of the seasons. Can I hear an amen? Do you receive that in the Lord? So right now, there is a burning desire in your heart that's from God. If you don't have it right now, you're going to get it. (laughs) Maybe it's to evangelize the nations. Maybe it's to preach around the world. Maybe it's to see the Rock River Valley healed and restored. Maybe it's to see your church flourish. Maybe it's to have an incredible ministry to the Lord and to His people. You know what that is. I'm convinced if you want to see that truly happen in your life and come forth, you're going to have to learn how to thrive in every season. That's how you're going to get to that place. My Bible says the one who's begun the good work in you is faithful to see it through to completion. And I think we sometimes we think God gives us the calling, the burning, the passion, the destiny, and God just releases us right into it. He's not a microwave God. Never has been, never will be. See, He gives you the vision, the call, the destiny, and then He takes you see through seasons to grow you into being ready to do that. If He gave us the vision, the calling, the passion, and released us right into it, we wouldn't be ready for it. We'd mess it up every single time. So God is taking you through the season to grow you, mature you, and teach you so that you can walk in that destiny that He's called you to. What does God want you to do in the midst of coronavirus? Fully engage. In every season, God is saying, fully engage. The problem is we get into a season and immediately we don't like it, and so we start to distance ourselves from it. And we start to fantasize and we start to do other things. And why, you know what I'm doing in this season? I'm just keeping busy and working hard so I can get through this season. Stop. Stop. Surrender the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit do in you what Holy Spirit wants to do in this season. Thrive! Can I hear an amen? Thrive! That's what God wants to do. Be fully engaged. Don't disassociate because you don't like it. Be fully engaged in what God is doing in the season. Well, brother, you've never been through the season I'm in right now. Really? Let's have some coffee. Let's talk about this. Ministry is not easy. Let's talk about what you're going through. And you know what? I think if we have coffee together and talk about it, we'll find we all go through the same seasons. 
We all have a favorite son season, a dreamer season, a hated by our brother season, a prison season, a false accusation season, a promotion season. We all have that. It's part of your seasoning. Amen? What did the Lord say? He said, you're the salt of the earth. What is salt? It's a seasoning. You can taste something and immediately go, ooh, it needs a little bit more salt. What, what is God doing in these seasons? He's saying, don't become salty, become seasoned. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. In the Rockford area, they make a wonderful potato chip. It's called Old Salties. Don't let that happen to you in this season. Become seasoned. What did Elisha do? He took the salt and he poured it into the spring at Jericho that produced nothing but death, nothing but miscarriage in women, nothing but failed crops, and he poured the salt in it, he prayed over it, and he said, Jehovah is rapha in you. No longer will you produce sickness, death, and disease. What's God doing in your life in this season? He's taking your saltiness and he's turning it into season. Does anybody realize that in the Lord? Can anybody see that? Try to get through this message and not have a different look, outlook on COVID-19. I double dog dare you in the Lord because God wants to speak to you in this message. Can I hear an amen? So how do we stay fully engaged in every season? How do we thrive in every season? Let me give you a couple notes on this. Pastor Cindy, will you take us to Nehemiah chapter 3 and verse 28? For our first point, my verse is going to be Nehemiah 3.28, and it's a simple verse, but I absolutely love it. How can you stay focused in every season? How can you stay engaged? Notice this simple little verse. Above the horse gate, the priests made repairs, each in front of his own house. Now, Nehemiah was a master administrator. He had people build the wall, rebuild the wall in front of their own homes. He didn't have somebody that lived on the east side of the city rebuilding the wall on the west side. He didn't have someone from the north side of the city rebuilding the wall on the south side. He had people look straight in front of them and build the wall. That's the point, number one. If you want to stay fully engaged and learn how to thrive in every season, build the section of the wall that's in front of you. And in the middle of this season, if you lose sight and you lose focus, look at the wall that God is calling you to build in this season and build it. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? It's simple. Keep looking at the wall in front of you and rebuild it. <clears throat> and how many know this was genius on the part of Nehemiah because if you're going to rebuild the wall in front of your house, you're going to rebuild it better than you would if you were rebuilding the wall anywhere else because it's the protection right in front of your house. And by the way, in the prophetic and in prophetic dreams, what does a house mean? It's not only the house that you live in, it's also your ministry. It can represent your ministry. What's God saying? Your ministry has to have a wall built around it. Can I hear an amen? has to have a wall built around it. The Lord said to Israel, I'll be the wall of fire around you and the glory within you. Can I hear an amen? So he put them on rebuilding the wall right in front of their home and everybody in the city was tasked with rebuilding the wall right in front of their home, and they never had to wonder one day in that season what their job was. Because every moment they got up and looked out the front window, there was their call in that season right in front of them. And they didn't have to wonder what they were supposed to do. Every day, just build the wall. Can I hear an amen? How many received that in the Lord? See, we've got to understand this. Why do people not thrive in the season that God has placed them in? It's because they fail to see what's directly in front of them. They fail to see what's directly in front of them. 
And I've been guilty of this before. God, I want to preach to the nations. God, I want to see this hit city healed. God, I want to, to build a house of prayer. God, I want to do this. 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 Who's been there? Do you know what's happening when we do that? We miss what God's wanting us to do in the midst of the season that we're in at the time. In fact, this week I read a young story about a young pastor. Or I read a story about a young pastor who was taking a very seasoned pastor to the airport after he'd spoken at his church. And he takes him to the airport, and as they're on the way, he says, you know, pastor, he says, oh, I've got so many desires in the Lord. I want to see cities restored. I want to see nations touched. He said, I want to see all these things happen. And he's listing all these things out. He said, there's so many things. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get them all done in the amount of time that God's given me. He says, Pastor, what do you think of that? You know what the seasoned pastor said to him? He said, you know, I don't wake up in the morning thinking about all these things that I want to do for the kingdom. He says, I don't wake up in the morning with all this ambition to do all these things. He said, I just wake up in the morning and I pray to God, help me complete today's assignment. And I went, whoa, that's it. That's it. We get so caught up in all this that we want to accomplish for Christ, we forget that this is just a day in the midst of a season to which we need to look in front of us and rebuild the wall in front of us and accomplish His mission for today. I think in life we think that our destiny is made up of all these huge moments. So we keep waiting for all these huge moments to happen. I don't think that's the way we should look at it. I think when we stand before the Lord and the Lord shows us every single season we went through, our destiny isn't going to be made up of these huge events. It's going to be made up of successes in every day that we surrendered to Him and worked the assignment, worked on the wall that was in front of us. And here's the thing. A lot of times, we look at other people's section of the wall instead of our own, and we don't want to be at our place in the wall. We want to be at their place. That keeps us from doing what's right in front of us. And I've been one that's done this. God, look at Pastor So-and-So's ministry. Look at Pastor So-and-So's ministry. God, there's like five guys my age in this region that are just flourishing right now. God, what is, what's going on? I wanted to be at their place in the wall. I didn't realize, and God's showing me now, I need to just be at the wall that's in front of me because I'm not called to their portion of the wall. I'm called to my portion of the wall. And by the way, if I'll build my portion of the wall and they'll build their portion of the wall, it'll help the entire wall to be complete and that wall is the kingdom. We've all got our place and we need to stay at our place in the wall and not long to be at other places. Can I hear an amen? I need to stay in the season and let God work and not look at other people's assignments and their section of the wall. Amen? And I've got to realize in my life, seasons are a time in my life when God is really emphasizing something that He wants to work on. And I need to just love Him, stay engaged in that season, and embrace what God is doing, and everything's going to work out. Can I hear an amen? Now, you may find this shocking, but I have an issue that I run into where I, I have a lot of drive for the Lord. I want to accomplish, I want to accomplish, I want to accomplish, and I want to get things done. And God's tried to break that in me. In fact, somebody said to me once, they said, well, Pastor Andrew, you know what your problem is? I thought, oh boy, here we go. Your problem is you're driven. And I distinctly remember saying to that person, well, I'm not driven, I just, I just have drive. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not driven. You know, and, and what God's had to do over the years is to teach me, it's not about me doing, 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 because I'm not created as a human doing. I'm created by God as a human being, and God wants me to stay in the state of being 
And when I stay in the state of being, I'm right in the middle of the season that he has me in, right when he wants me in it. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. And more than once, God has said to me, he said, Andrew, you're the student and not the teacher. You don't get to pick the subject matter. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, I want to be in this season. I want to be learning this right now. And I want to be flowing in this right now. Andrew, you're not the instructor. You are the student. You do not get to pick the subject matter. You do not get to pick the core curriculum. You do not get to pick when you take the class. You'll take it when I tell you to. And if you don't surrender to the class in the season in which I want to bring it, then you will take it again. And it will be harder the next time. How many know we do that with God? Well, God, I don't like this season. I want this season over here. Well, how many know God doesn't have you in the season over there? He has you in the season over here. Well, God, I don't like the view from the wall that I'm building here. I like the view that Rosie has over there. I mean, it's looking pretty good. Well, you know what? I can't go build Rosie's part of the wall any more than she can go and rebuild my part of the wall. I've got to learn what I'm learning in this season at my section of the wall while she's learning what she's learning at her season in the section of the wall. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Now, sometimes at different sections of the wall, we're, certain, we're learning the same lesson. Right now, we're all learning much of the same lesson, but we've got to understand this in the Lord. Now, I want to say something to you here that I think is going to really drive this whole point home to some people okay now i want you to listen to this a situation that you are in or a season that you're in that you're just surviving in can turn into a season that you're thriving in if you'll just surrender to god and embrace what he's doing in your life in that season let me say it again a season that you're just surviving in can turn into a season that you're thriving in if you'll just surrender to the Lord and embrace what He's doing in your life in that season. Can I hear an amen? In fact, I want to give you a little bit of insight here. There have been seasons in my life that I could not stand. In fact, I did everything in my life, everything I could to just survive that season. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But the problem is when you're in survival mode, you're not in learning mode. You can't be in both. You can't be in both. So there have been seasons that have been horrible and I'm just trying to survive when God wants to teach me how to flourish and grow in that season. To be like a tree planted by the springs of living water that bears its fruit in due season and doesn't have to fear in times of drought because its roots go deep in the living water. Hallelujah. And its precious leaf doesn't wither. Does that make sense? Lord doesn't tell you what season it's in. <laughs> you know what season it's in? Every season. That's what God wants you to be. But here's the key. I've found in my life, when I've been in the seasons that I'm just surviving and trying to get through, if I'll listen to the Holy Spirit and embrace what He's doing in that season, the moment I start embracing it and learning, shoom, He takes me into the next season. It's like, God, if I'd have understood it was that easy, I would embrace what you were doing at the beginning of the season, and we could have done this a whole lot quicker. And the Holy Ghost at the throne is going, duh. But the problem is, if I'm just trying to survive it, I can't thrive in it. How many of you are just trying to survive COVID-19, and you're not looking at how to thrive in the Lord during COVID-19? Maybe if we'd all in the church start looking at how we thrive in the season, we'd be shifted out of the season by God quicker. Maybe if we'd all get in the secret place, if we'd all be listening to the Lord, if we'd all be trying to honor Him together as the church, shoom, maybe God's waiting for the church for the curtain to be lifted. Maybe He's not waiting on the governor. Come on. Uh, think about it now. You know, I love it. Sometimes God will offend our mind to get to our heart. May He do so with that statement. Amen. And that's not in my notes. That's just something the Holy Spirit just said. Amen. So I'm convinced in our walk with the Lord.
that success is looking at what's right in front of us and doing it wholeheartedly. You know, right now in the season, 40 plus hours a week, God has me as the senior manager of human resources at Bergstrom. Do you know what God's heart for me is? Every single day that I'm at work to do that job wholeheartedly. Because God has me in that job. He has placed me there. Come on now. And I need to do exactly what God is telling me to do in this job, in this season. Can I hear an amen? What's your job in this season? Are you doing it wholeheartedly? Or are you longing for something else to the point that you're not engaged in what God wants you to be engaged in in this season? And you're missing it. You're saying, Pastor Andrew, it's as easy as you being the best senior manager of human resources you can be at Bergstrom in this season? Yeah, that's part of it. And it's part, also part of it's in this extra time to be getting with the Lord more than ever before. And during this time, to be spending more time with my family than ever before. And to get the vision for the next season for this church. And God's been doing that too. And I've been giving that to our servant leadership team. I think it's much more simple than what we make it to be. Build the section of the wall that's in front of you in this season. How many are receiving that in the Lord? Amen? All right. So step number one is build the season of the wall or the section of the wall that's in front of you during this season. Step number two, if you want to learn how to thrive in every season, don't rush the process. If you're a note taker, point number two, don't rush the process. See, being out of season is a dangerous thing. Skipping steps in a season is a dangerous thing. Staying in the process, going through each step, is going to give you the strength that you need to sustain you and keep you and release you into what God has for you in this season. So we've got to stop thinking when God brings us into a season that we can just jump into another. Now I'm going to say this in love. We've had folks in this church before that God, you know, God will take us individually through a season and corporately through a season. So we've got to understand that. There's individual seasons and corporate seasons. And there'll be seasons where God was taking us through things as a church corporately and people didn't like it and they'd leave the church to go to another church that's in a season they like. Well, guess what? They were at that other church until God brought that church into the season that we were in when they left this church to go there. And guess what they did in that season at their new church? They left and went to another church that was in a season that they liked. Here's the thing. You can run, but God is going to get you in the season that He wants you in when He wants you in it. A change of scenery doesn't change the season. I've had folks that have said to me in ministry, oh, pastor, my dream is to move to Missouri. My dream is to move to Colorado. My dream is to move to Arizona. My dream is to move here, here, and there. Okay, well, why do you want to move there? Oh, because it's so much better there. It's so much better there. Yeah, the weather's better. The jobs are better. This is better. That's there. That's better. They don't want to ask me if God's saying if they should move or not. So then they move, and you know how many of them I've seen come back? The vast majority. Why? Because wherever you are, there you are. And if you're leaving Illinois because you don't like the season God has you in, you'll find yourself in that same season no matter where you relocate. Because He's the God of the ordained seasons. He ordains the time and seasons in your life. You are going to go through those seasons no matter how much you fight and you kick against the goats, no matter how childlike you act or how, what kind of tantrum you throw. God loves you enough to know what He wants to, you to, wants to do in you in this season is more important than your complaining. So he's going to keep you in that season because what he wants to teach you in the season is so invaluable for you in the next seasons that are going to come. I think sometimes the seasons are elongated because we try to get out of them. And so we have to stay in that season longer than we should. 
But if we would realize that in the season, I just need to look at the wall that's in front of me and build that section of the wall, that everything would be great, even when it's not. So here's my suggestion for you today. Be okay with the process and be okay with the timing of God. How many know that Joseph couldn't leave Potiphar's house and go right into the court of Pharaoh and interpret his dream? He wasn't ready yet. Did he feel ready? You bet he did. Did God know that he wasn't ready? Absolutely. So what happened to him? Something that was completely unfair. He would not do anything to take advantage of Potiphar. Potiphar's wife looks at him, wants to spend time with him, wants to seduce him. She's walking in the spirit of Jezebel. She sends everybody out one day. It's just her and Joseph. She grabs a hold of him and says, now is the time. He does the godly thing. He runs. She grabs a hold of his cloak. Here's the second cloak that gets him into trouble. First one is the cloak of many colors. Brothers hated him because of it. Those cloaks were given to the virgin daughters of Israel, interestingly enough, king's daughters usually. But his dad makes him one. Okay. Second cloak was the one he ran out of and she held on to. Boy, isn't that interesting. I'm going to argue today both cloaks were part of the seasons he was in. He does the right thing. He honors God. He runs from the house. What is his reward? Prison! And you look at that and go, this can't be God. It's God. When it seems like you do everything the way you're supposed to, and it leads you to a season that looks like prison, God is the much, as much as the God of God. God is so much in love with you and wanting to grow you and has such an amazing plan for you as he does in the prison season, as he does in the season adjacent to it, when he brings you out to interpret the dream and makes you second in the land. Even if it seems to look like prison, God's in it. Does that make sense? Can I hear an amen? It was real quiet in the room when I said that. See, sometimes you do everything the right way and it doesn't turn out the way that you thought. Well, God, I've done this for you. I've done that for you. I did everything right in that season. Why did it lead to this season? Instead of doing that, we've got to go, okay, God, what is it you want to do in my life in this season and how can I thrive in it? What's the wall that's directly in front of me in this season and how can I thrive in it? Can I hear an amen? And don't skip a step because you don't feel like it's going to help you hit the targets. Every step in every season is designed to help you hit the target. Don't skip it. The process is the grace of God. Let go of your invisible timeline that you think is what it's going to look like when God says He's going to do what He's going to do in your life. <coughs> Here's the thing. We've all got a timeline. If you ask me by 50 years of age, where do you think God's going to have me when I first started in the ministry at 28? Uh, where I would have told you I was going to be at 50 is a completely different place where I am right now. But what I did was, when I went into the ministry at 28 and God started moving powerfully in the first church that I was in, I created a timeline in here that I thought God was going to follow. And so what I did was in every season of my life from that point forward, <coughs> if what God was taking me through didn't appear to me to be the substance of what was going to cause me to be able to stick to the timeline, I rejected it. Are you catching this? When I should have realized everything going on in that season was of the Lord. And God wanted to use it. And my time looks different than his timeline. That's why his ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. We've got to throw out the invisible timeline of how we think God's going to do things in our lives, and we've got to build the wall in front of us. You know what I found? Being, being a senior manager of human resources at Bergstrom, 
that God can give me a ministry in the marketplace as much as He can give me a ministry from the pulpits. And I've got to thrive and grow in both places. Amen? Hallelujah. And how sad to go through the, the time at Bergstrom and not realize there was a ministry waiting there. An opportunity to affect the office I work in, the company that I work in, an opportunity to have a Bible study every Wednesday at noon on our campus, our main campus. I mean, look at all of that. But if I just thought, hey, this is business and this is ministry and started compartmentalizing, I'd have missed what God was going to do. And doesn't that cause us not to embrace the season also when we compartmentalize? God works this way here in my life. God works this way here in my life. God does this in this place in my life. No, He's God all over your life and throughout your life. And He's going to do it the way He wants to do it in every season. Can I hear an amen? Do you receive that in the Lord? So how many here enjoy Bob Jones? Bob Jones was a prophetic guy. He was out of Kansas City. He had a huge prophetic ministry way before Kansas City. But I find Bob Jones to be this interesting guy. He's, he's with the Lord now. And they called him the hillbilly prophet. This guy was an absolute riot. And he'd be ministering in services, and he'd say, you know, God wants to tell you what fold of the ministry that you're called to. If you want to know what fold of the ministry you're called to, come on up and I'm going to pray for you. So folks would come up, he'd lay a hand on their head and they'd pray for, for, he'd pray for them and he'd prophesy and he says, well, God says you're an apostle. And, and he'd start praying over them an apostolic blessing. And after one of those sessions, the lead pastor of the church he was invited to and ministering in asked him, well, how do you know when you pray over somebody? If they're going to be a, a prophet or they're going to be an apostle or a pastor or teacher or evangelist. He said, no problem. He said, if I'm praying for somebody and my thumb starts twitching, they're supposed to be an apostle. Apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. So based upon what finger started twitching, that's what they were. Is that not a riot? I mean, that was Bob Jones. And God took him. He had third heaven encounters. I mean, this guy had an amazing ministry. So one day, he's ministering in this church, and a young pastor who's in his very first year of ministry is pastoring the church he's invited to. And he takes it, the, the young pastor takes Bob Jones out to lunch. And he asked Bob Jones, he said, if you could give any advice to a young pastor, what would you give him? Are you ready for this? If you hear anything in this entire message other than thrive in every season and build the wall that's in front of you, hear this. Bob Jones said, absolutely. He didn't even have to think about it. He says, absolutely. He says, I know what I would tell them. Stop being in such a hurry to get into the inner place of anointing. Instead, take time to die in the outer court. Isn't that interesting? He said, I would say to young pastors, stop being in such a hurry to get into the inner place of anointing and instead learn how to die in the outer court. Is that not a beautiful word? Is that not everything that we're talking about right now? What an incredible word. He's saying, stop rushing to be in that place where you're flowing in all this anointing that you want to flow in. Learn how to die first. And as you learn how to die and fall in love with Jesus, the Lord's going to bring you into that place of anointing. But you're going to flow in that anointing the way that God wants you to flow in that anointing because you're flowing in that anointing as a dead man. How many received that in the Lord? Amen? So what we've got to realize in the midst of these seasons is that God shows us and then He grows us. Come on now. And some of the greatest places of growth in our lives can be the cave and can be the prison. You want to know some of the places where some of the events that David was in where he wrote the most beautiful psalms is when he was hiding in caves from Saul. If you study these psalms and when he wrote them, some of the most beautiful psalms came when he was hiding in caves. In fact, he was hiding in one cave and Saul comes in to go use the restroom 
Saul doesn't realize that David and his men are in the back side of the cave. He's in the front side of the cave, and he doesn't have any of his bodyguards with. David's mighty men know it, and you know what David's mighty men say to him? David, now it's time for you to seize your prophetic destiny. Let us put a spear through Saul and let us lift you up as king over Israel so you can start walking in this prophetic destiny. And you know what David's heart was? I'm not going to step, I'm not going to skip a step in the process. I will not touch God's anointed. Why do you think so many times he had an opportunity to kill Saul and his mighty men were ready to take Saul out. They could have just like that. And David said, I will not touch God's anointed. That translated in Hebrew is this. I will not skip the season I'm in. Because if David had let his mighty men take Saul out, he'd have missed several seasons where God was establishing things in him that he was going to need once he was anointed king. And if you think in order to get in your prophetic destiny in the Lord, you've got to kill a spiritual father, it's not of the Lord. If you've got to step on your spiritual father or mentor or tear somebody out of a position for you to get to where you think God has for you, I question whether that's God. Because if you're doing it God's way in the right season, God will move that person and God will move you. And you will not have to touch God's anointed. Does that make sense? Now, if you're a prophet, God may have, to, may have you speak <laughs> against God's anointed if God's anointed is not in the right place. But does anybody catch what I'm saying here? See, God wants to bring an end to the spirit of ambition in your life. Because the spirit of ambition will cause you to jump out of seasons and go to different places in the wall. You've got to realize the process is the grace of God. You've got to realize that David was anointed as king and then sent right back out to the shepherd's field. David killed Goliath and then was sent back home. See, is anybody catching this? See, we've got to be willing to stay in the season that God wants us in. Joseph loved it. When he's prophesying, the sun, moon, and the stars are going to bow down to me. And my father and, and my, my, my brothers are going to bow down to me. He loved that prophecy, didn't he? And if he could, he'd have stepped right into that thing. But he'd have been a 17-year-old spoiled brat leader. And it would have been an absolute disaster. The young man at 17 who prophesied the will of God through dreams and visions was the same young man that at 30 years of age stood broken before Pharaoh, willing to let Jehovah just flow through him any way Jehovah wanted to. And once he was in that place of dying, God promoted him. And if you look at what God did, God used him to save his entire family, and God used him to preserve the line of Christ. He longed to go back to Israel. But we don't see that he ever did except when his dad died, that he was back in Israel briefly in order to bury him. He died in Egypt, but you know what he said? He said, one of these days, my people are going to come up out of Egypt. Take those dry bones, my dry bones with you. And you know, Israel carried those dry bones around for 40 years. Boy, wouldn't that have been interesting for you if a season of 40 years of your life were carrying dry, dead bones. They didn't bury him until they conquered the promised land. Isn't that interesting? See, we've got to understand God's seasons and God's purposes are perfect. Can I hear an amen? So David, don't kill Saul to try to speed up the process. Don't do it. Hallelujah. And don't be afraid that you're going to miss something if you stay in the process. Trust God. Can I hear an amen? Cindy, can you give us 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6, please? 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. I really believe this is going to bless you in the Lord. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. Thank you, Jesus. The word says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, 
that he may lift you up in due time. Pastor Cindy, can we see that in the Amplified, please? Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up. Oh, I'm sorry. In the Amplified. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time, or could I put it this way, in the appropriate season. Stay in the season that God has you in and build the wall that's directly in front of you. Well, pastor, what are we supposed to be doing right now? Stay in the season God has you in. Learn to thrive in that season and build the wall that's in front of you. Can I hear an amen? All right, third and final point of this message today is this. Don't give yourself so much credit. You're not that big. You can't stop God's plan for your life. So point number one, we're building the wall in front of us. Point number two, we're not rushing the process. Point number three, don't worry that if I make this decision or that decision, it's going to pull me out of God's will for my life. You're not that big. If you make a decision that pulls you over here and God wants you here, God's going to get you to where he wants you. Now, it's easier to hear what God's saying and do what he says, but sometimes I think we fear that we can just completely destroy God's will for our lives. The only way you're going to do that is if you turn your back on him and just not want him at all. And that's not you. That's not who you are. Can I hear an amen? You want God's will for your life, and you're going to stay in God's will for your life. Amen? So this is what we need to keep in mind. The Lord is going to get you where he wants you to go when he wants you to get there. God's going to get you to where he wants you to go when he wants you to get there. Just humble yourself and trust him. He is going to get you there. Build the section of the wall that's in front of you. Amen? Do you receive that in the Lord? Let me ask that again. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. And the test at the end of a season when you're transitioning into the new season, is not did I make it through, it's did I thrive in the process. Amen? It's not did I make it through because you may have just survived through that season. That wasn't the heart of God. The heart of God is did I thrive in the process. And by the way, this season may be sitting in a cubicle at work. It may be sitting in the secret place. It may be traveling. Who knows what it is? Stay in the season. Build the wall in front of you with passion and with vision. Can I hear an amen? What happened when God put Israel into Egypt? They thrived. What happened to the number of Israelites when God put them in Egypt? Exponentially exploded to where there was more Israelites than there was Egyptians, and there was only roughly 17 Israelites that went down. Wasn't that interesting? And God sticks them in the best land there, and they multiply. Can I hear an amen? Do you receive that in the Lord? When God put Israel in the Babylon, they thrived. Be fully engaged in the season that God has you in and trust Him. And realize that God is more important in the growth in your life than you can ever imagine. Trust Him. And for many of us, promotions on the other side of the season. That, that First Peter promotion that we were just reading about, First Peter 5-6, many times is on the other side of the season. So embrace the season. Embrace what God wants to do in the midst of this season. And don't move until God moves you. Hallelujah. Do you receive that in the Lord? And if you're looking for a fourth point, here it is. Realize that the two seasons that God will do the most work in your life, and I've already mentioned this, is the season of the cave and the season of prison. Look at David's life. 
the season of the cave grew him more than anything else, and the season in prison for Joseph's life grew him more than anything else. Can I hear an amen? Now, I want you to see something. Let's go to Isaiah 49, and, and I'm going to begin closing with this. Do you know, when you're in the place of the cave like David was, that's a place of hiddenness. Do you receive that in the Lord? That's a place of hiddenness. So I want you to notice what Isaiah 49 says. If I go to Isaiah 49, verses 1 and 2, notice that the word says this, Listen to me, you islands, and hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me, and from my birth he made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword, and in the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. Notice verse 16. See, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands, and your walls are ever before me. Can I hear an amen? What did Isaiah say here? He said, Lord, you sharpen me like a sword. Lord, you polish me like an arrow in hiddenness. In hiddenness. Some of the deepest work that God is going to do in your life is in the season of the cave. <laughs> it's in the season where you feel like nobody sees you, nobody understands you, Nobody gets the calling on your life. Nothing's happening. No doors are opening. It's in that place where if you will use that hidden time to press into God and fully engage in that season where the Lord says, you're going to emerge like a sharpened sword and a sharp arrow that I have hidden in my quiver that I'm going to pull out whenever I want and shoot you towards the targets. It's in that place of hiddenness. So I'm going to argue in your life at every time and in every season, no matter what is going on, God is working in your life. What we've got to do is press into the Holy Spirit, acknowledge God, let God tell us what He's doing, and embrace it. Instead of wanting to rush out of that season and get to the next one. Remember, in this season, God is seasoning you. Don't become salty. Don't long for that next season, even if it's in the cave. While David was in the cave, God was preparing him to reign. See, we've got to understand that. God was teaching him authority. God was teaching him and growing him in that cave in, in a much more powerful way than if David was living in a palace. See, even the cave was God's plan, and in the cave, God provided for him. God grew him. God sharpened him. God prepared him. Can I hear an amen? Well, why do we learn in the prison? Well, in the prison, we're usually there because of false accusation. In your ministry to the Lord and the Lord's people, if you haven't been falsely accused yet, just give it time. It's going to happen, and you're going to be in prison. There may be a day where it feels like your entire church is accusing you. <clears throat> you know what? God's not calling you into a new season in another church. God's calling you to learn and grow right there where you're at. Come on. And to grow in the midst of that environment. Well, that feels oppressive. Yep, just ask the diamond how oppressed it felt. Because all that pressure... Turn that coal into a diamond. See, we've got to understand this is the will of God. Amen? And by the way, Jesus said, if you're going to serve me, if you're going to follow me, men are going to hate you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to persecute you. They're going to say all manner of things against you. When that begins to happen, we've got to stop going, oh, this is a terrible season, and go, ooh, I'm getting a chance to be Christ-like. This is so good. Holy Spirit, what do you want to teach me in this season? 
Don't try to survive it. Okay, I'm just going to hold on to Jesus and get through this season. No, how about listening to Jesus, finding out the wall that's in front of you in this season and building the wall. Amen? Hallelujah. And Lord, I'm going to stay in this season until you tell me that I'm done. Until you move me on, I will stay engaged. I will stay focused. I will build the wall in front of me. I will thrive in this season, God. Or everything seems to say to me, there's nothing to thrive in. God, you have provided a way for me to thrive in this season. The world puts it this way. When life hands you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> What's God saying? In the midst of this season that you don't like and you don't enjoy, look at what I'm doing in your life in this season. And understand that when you stand before me and I connect all the dots, that season was crucial in your development for me to move you into the next. Amen? Hallelujah. We got to see this for what it is in the Lord. This is the word that God gave me for today. And, and he gave it to me through something he had me listen to. And then just God just started exploding and talking to me about how this word applies for us in this body and, and for the body of Christ right now. We've got to understand COVID-19 is not something being forced on us. We've got to realize it's something God saw coming. So he wants you to ask him, how can I thrive in this season? God, what is the wall you put in front of me to build in this season? I love it. If you study further in the book of Nehemiah, a season came where there were these three individuals in Nehemiah's life that came against him. And throughout the entire rebuilding of the wall, all three of these guys kept coming and coming and coming to distract him and deter him and, and to try to get him from rebuilding the wall. But he kept going. And at one phase in the rebuilding, he was told that they were putting an army together to come in and stop the building. So you know what he did? He told the people rebuilding the wall, he said, have a brick in one hand and a sword in the other. Have a brick in one hand and a sword in the other to build and to war, to build and to war, to build and to war. A lot of times in these seasons that are difficult, keep building the wall, but keep speaking the Word of God throughout the entire process. Keep wielding that rhema sword and speaking over the season. This season may be difficult, but he who began the good work in me will see it through to completion. You keep speaking the Word of God in the midst of that season and look for the silver lining in the midst of the gray cloud because God is using that season to grow you. Stay in it. Don't try to skip steps. Trust God. He's mapped this thing out. He wrote everything about your life in a book, David said. And you're living that out. God knew you'd be in this season. This season may not be happening because you did something wrong. It may be happening because you did something right. And because of it, it brought you into a cave or a prison season. What? And that's where God wants you to go, okay, God, I did everything I was supposed to do and I ended up here. What are you doing in my life in this season? I'm going to trust the hand of the potter. I'm the clay. You're the potter. I'm the student. You're the instructor. I'm the steward. You're the master. And keep that attitude in mind before the Lord and let God author this thing. Lord, you're the author and I'm the paper. <laughs> God, just make this thing happen. This is you and I surrender. And if you'll do that, you'll thrive in every season that he puts you in. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for everybody that is in the sanctuary right now. And God, I thank you for everybody who's going to hear this message, Lord, and is hearing it via our live broadcast. Lord, I ask that you will take this message and burn it upon the hearts of both groups. Lord, I ask that you will take this message and make sure that it gets to 
those that are crying out in the midst of this season and believing God that nothing can good can come out of it, God may give them the revelation that you ordain the times and the seasons and that you want to use this season in their life to do great things. Lord, I thank you that you've given each of us a section of the wall to rebuild. Lord, help us in every season focus on that section of the wall and to rebuild it. And Lord, for each and every one of us, may you be the the wall of fire about us and the glory within us. God, I thank you for the season that we're in right now. We can either see it as dark and distant and separated and disjointed and difficult, or we can see it as a time to press deeper into you, to spend more time with family, to witness, to minister, Lord, to share you with others because there's so many questions out there. God, I ask that you will help us mm, thrive in the midst of this season. Lord, I pray now over this word, may it not return to you void, but may it accomplish its purpose. And Lord Jesus, I ask this in your name, knowing that there's no other name under heaven given to men by which they can be saved, but the name of Jesus. Knowing, Lord, you're the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by you. Jesus, we pray these things in your name today. And everybody said, Amen. So I want to thank you for coming today. I want to thank you for tuning in today. And I pray that this is a word that is going to mess with you. That this is a word that's going to grow you. That this is a word that God is going to use in a powerful, powerful way. So I just pray that and and just pray that God will bless you this week and amazing things will happen. Let's surrender to the Lord and thrive in the season. Believing as we do as the church. God will bring an end to this season and bring us into the next as we've learned everything that God wants us to learn. So thank you. Thank you for for being a part of our service today. I do want to remind everybody, we've had some folks ask us, hey, if we listen in online and we're in Rockford or some other city and we want to be able to to bless the refuge, is there a way to do it? Uh, If you're wanting to, if you go to our church website, therefugeweb.org, If you go to the bottom of the first page, there's a safe donation button there if anyone wants to use it. Um, We love you and bless you whether you ever give anything to this ministry or not. We just love you and we're so glad that you're tuning in. Uh, But some have asked, and so we just want to let you know that that's available. I want to encourage you this afternoon, ask the Lord, God, what are you trying to teach me in this season? What is the wall that's in front of me? How do you want it built? How can I thrive in the season? And if you will, God's really going to bless you. He's going to speak to you. He said in Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, call upon me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know. So with that said, God bless you. May God keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and may he be gracious unto you. May he turn his countenance towards you and fill you with shalom peace. Nothing missing nothing broken. I want to say thank you for turning, tuning in today. I want to say hey to my spiritual daughter and, and uh, that's down in Branson. I want to say hi to Whitney today. RJ, if you're listening in from Colorado, we're so, we're so excited that you uh, caught the service today. Dusty, we're excited that uh, you caught the service today. And Refuge family, thank you for coming and thank you for tuning in today. And May God bless you. We just love you in the Lord. Jack from Florida, if you're listening in, thank you for listening today. We bless you. Have a great week, everybody.